and talk about continuity. And this deals with a function, and we're going to really talk about a continuity at a specific point, which you can talk about continuity throughout a whole function. We'll talk about that a little bit. But um, so you'll sometimes hear if the function is continuous or a function is not continuous or is discontinuous at a certain value. So it's, it is kind of it goes along with what it says. A function is continuous if there is essentially no breaks in the graph. If, if when you draw the graph, there's no place where you have to pick up your pencil to, you know, or pen to, to continue to draw it. So, I mean, for instance, just something that's very uh, uh, basic graph here, just something like this. It looks like a, you know, a parabola type graph, whatever it might be. Um, you can see in this graph right here, I was just able to draw the graph in one continuous motion. There was no places where there's a break in the graph, a hole in the graph, an asymptote, anything like that. Here's an example of a graph that's continuous for all values of x. This graph is continuous for all values of x. Okay. Now, here's an example of something that's not continuous at a certain value. So, for instance, if something looks like this, maybe. So, let's say at that point right there, I'll just call it A. Okay? So, this graph right here is not continuous at x equals A, or it has a discontinuity at x equals A. So, we'll go ahead and note that here. So, it's, it's not continuous, and I'm abbreviating continuous, obviously, here. Not continuous at x equals A. So that is one way that you can discuss its continuity, is to just say where it's not continuous. Another way is to say where it is continuous, okay? And so this graph would be continuous. The only spot where it's not continuous is at x equals a. At every other point on this graph, it is continuous. So going all the way back to negative infinity, and then after a, all the way up to infinity. So we can write this as an interval. So this is, um, it's continuous on the intervals, and we're going to go ahead and the first one's going to be from negative infinity to A, and so what that means, that's an interval right there, so in case that's the first time you've seen a notation like this, this is not like a coordinate point, like, you know, if you plot a point two, five, it would look the same thing, but this means from negative infinity all the way up to A, and with this being a uh, parenthesis here, it means it's not including A, meaning A is not continuous, but all the way up until you get to A, it is continuous. When you include something using this interval notation, you use a bracket like that. So, and then anyways, it also is continuous from A all the way to infinity. So again, you can see here this doesn't include A, because I put the parenthesis, but, you know, starting immediately after A and all the way up to infinity is continuous. So you can, you know, there's two separate ways. You can talk about where is it not continuous or where is it continuous. And they, you know, both relate to one another clearly. Okay, let's take a look here. So that's an example of a, a discontinuity. This one happens to be called a removable discontinuity. It's not really something we need to know in AP calculus, but um, something that can be basically fixed with one point is a removable discontinuity. And here's an example of a couple more discontinuities. Let's call this a value here A, and this value here B, and of course, you know, on an actual graph there would be numerical values there, but I'm just using A and B to represent my x values. So, at this, on this graph right here, at this value x equals A, look more like an A, uh, at x equals A, it's not continuous. So there's, again, there's a break in the graph. Okay, you can see, of course, you clearly have to pick your pencil or pen up to draw that. Same thing in B. We have a vertical asymptote there. We cannot cross over a vertical asymptote. There's a break in that graph. So this graph right here is not continuous at x equals A and at x equals B. Okay? And this graph right here, if we were to describe where it is continuous, we would say it's uh, the interval is continuous. And you can see here, so at A it breaks, but before A it looks fine. Just try a little arrow there. So it's continuous from negative infinity all the way up to A, but 
not including A, because at A this graph is not continuous. And then from A to B, you know, in between A and B it's always, always continuous, and then from B to infinity. And some people might look and say, oh, but shouldn't we have a, a bracket here on this A? And we shouldn't, because this, these, this interval is describing its continuity. And at A it's not continuous. Whether or not there's a point there or not doesn't matter, it's just not continuous at A. So there's some examples of discontinuity and, I guess, continuity as well. So there is a formal definition of continuity. Um, briefly describe this here. All right, so we're talking about the formal definition of continuity. So what it says here is that uh, if f is continuous at some value x equals a, so we're only talking about continuity at a specific point, in this case x equals a, there are three criteria that have to be met. One is that f of a must be defined. Okay, f of a must be defined. So there must be some value associated with it. Um, two is that f, or the limit, as x approaches a, of f of x exists. Exists. Hopefully that's spelled right. And three is that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. So if all those three conditions are met, then um, the function is continuous at x equals a. Just an example of where it would break down. Um, Say we have something like this. So here's x equals a, for instance. Well, in that case, um, at x equals a, we have a hole in the graph. So that means in that case, f of a is not even defined. So at number one, already we've broken down. No good. Let's say we have that random dot up here. Let me say I'll put that at like 5, and this one right here at like 2. So in this case, f of a is defined, OK? At x equals a, the value is 5, so f of a is equal to 5. Is the limit of, as x approaches a of f of x exists? Yes, it does. Okay, as I, you know, approach a from both sides, uh, my y value approaches 2, so the limit exists, it's 2. But down here, the y value, the f of a is 5, the limit is 2, it breaks down at 3. And similarly, if you had something like this, Okay, in that case right there, the limit would not exist. You can see that f of a is defined because I do have a closed circle right there, but, you know, it's a no-go with the limit. So, in order for it to be continuous, which means at that point there is no break in the graph, all of those conditions would have to be met. You can just kind of see some examples of it breaking down right there. Okay, let's just take a look real quick at a few functions and to try and figure out, if we look at a function, how can we tell from that function if or if there's any discontinuities in the graph. So let's just say we have something like this. So if we look at something like that, and we are asked to uh, identify all the x values where the function is not continuous, or identify you know all the discontinuities of f of x. It's the same thing, just said diff differently. Um, what we would do here is we would basically be looking to see, is there any places where the uh, denominator is equal to zero? That's the main case where that happens. Well, in this case, you know, we should recognize that as just a parabola. Parabola is continuous everywhere. There's no holes in the graph or anything. There's no denominator in this function even. So this graph right here, there's no discontinuities, okay? There are no discontinuities. Hopefully I'm spelling things right, and if I'm not, I'm sorry but hopefully you'll get the, the gist anyways. Um, let's look at another function here. So let's have g of x is equal to 5 over x squared minus 9. Okay. Well, in this case, you know, like I said, from the, when I was talking about the previous one, the main thing you're looking at is there any places where the denominator is equal to 0. Well, this has a denominator. Let's factor this out. That factors into x minus 3 times x plus 3 on the bottom. So there's clearly x equals 3 and x equals negative 3 are two places where there's, there's a the denominator is 0, and therefore where this graph is not continuous. So this is not continuous at 
x equals negative 3 and at x equals 3. So one last case here, and this is another one that you have to be aware of. It's slightly different than both of those. Say we have something like this. f of x is equal to, and it's a piecewise function, so the top one's negative 2x, the bottom one is x squared minus 4x plus 1, and then this one will be used for values of x that are less than or equal to 2, this one for values of x that are greater than 2. So with a piecewise function, the first thing you want to do is look at each function individually to see is there any places where each function individually will have any discontinuities. And in this case it's not. That's just a line, that's a parabola, there's no denominator issues, so we don't have to worry about it. Now if this was, for instance, if we if this function right here had been in place right here, you know, we would have to, to look for that. Is there any places where x is less than or equal to 2 that uh, you know, are not continuous? But uh, in this case we don't have to. Now, we have a piecewise function, so we have looked at kind of the possibilities here, and, and the graph that I'm going to draw is not related to this graph necessarily, I'm just showing what's possible, so I will stop it at x equals 2, but you know, this graph right here is used up until x equals 2, but this graph is used after x equals 2. So, you know, and again, I'm not drawing these specific graphs, but say we have something like this, so say that first function goes to x equals 2 and leaves off right here. Okay, well, one option that could happen is our function then that picks up at x equals 2 and continues starts off down here at a completely different y value. So we have, you know, our, our initial function went to y equal, x equals 2, left off at some y value up here, and our other one picks up at a completely different y value. In that case, the function would be not continuous at that breakoff point, okay, in the piecewise function. Um, another option would be you know, this, this initial function stops at some y value, and the other function picks up from that same y value, okay? In that case, it would be continuous at that place where it's, uh, where it's breaking off. So we have to test to see which of those cases it is. And we'd rather not have to sketch a graph each time for this. So what we can do is we can just check to see, you know, this leaves off at x equals 2. What y value does it leave off with at x equals 2? What we do is plug 2 in here, we get it leaves off at a y value of negative 4. Let's check to see what y, what y value does this one pick up from at x equals 2. Well, I just plug 2 in here. Even though it doesn't include 2, it still is going to start infinitely close to 2. So we plug 2 in here. It'll be 4 minus 8 plus 1 is going to be a negative 3. Uh, 4 minus 8, negative 4, yeah. And so you, you see you get two different y values. So this one leaves off at negative 4, this one picks up from negative 3. So it's kind of like this case. Obviously the y values are not negative 4 and negative 3 that I've drawn there. But it's kind of like that case. So it means it's not going to be continuous at 2. Okay? Uh, if these y values were the same, it would be continuous at 2. It would be continuous everywhere in that case. So this is not continuous at x equals